right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1990 Geo Metro convertible. Up front is a 1.0 liter inline three and down below is a three speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Geo Metro for a couple of reasons. First of all, this is the convertible model for 1990, which is extremely rare. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later on. But the second reason is the fact that this is a Geo product. You just don't really see these anymore. This is such a clean, well-preserved example as well. So just on all fronts, I am just overly excited to share this car with you today. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers like this retro sticker pack that would fit very well with this Geo Metro or a big friggin' bottle sticker, both with free shipping. You can also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form. And you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that one liter under the hood. Well, it's not quite a powerhouse. It makes about 55 horsepower, which is not a lot. It, it doesn't make a whole lot of horsepower. And to be honest, it's not even that zippy. However, I will now put my foot to the floor and hopefully we hit the speed limit before I have grandkids. <laughs> and there we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's not fast. However, that was not the point of the Geo Metro. Now, this is the LSI, and we'll talk about that in a second. But this got 43 miles to the gallon in the city, 51 miles to the gallon on the highway back in 1990. Now, those numbers were adjusted. I actually recently learned that the fuel economy standards were changed in 2007, how they measure fuel economy. So those numbers are adjusted for the 2007 change. So if you have a Geo Metro and your window sticker said something else that's why like I said paired to it is a three-speed automatic transmission now that's part of the LSI package the 1990 convertibles only came in the LSI trim level and that meant it got air conditioning the three-speed automatic and a cassette player you could get yourself a cassette player which this has since been changed out but pretty nifty nevertheless you could get the LSI in convertible or in the standard hatchback, but those were the key features of it. Last but not least, of course, the Geo Metro is front wheel drive. So what's it like to actually drive a Geo Metro convertible? Well, it drives like most economy cars from the 90s. You do have to treat it kind of like a classic car in the sense that you have to remember that you are a little bit smaller. You're not as fast as modern day traffic. so. Just have that in the back of your mind while driving around. Leave some extra space between cars. Give yourself an ample amount of room to get up to speed. You'll be golden. Exhibit A. There we go. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have some very simple gauges. On the left is my fuel, which stays in its position even when the vehicle is off. I love that about older cars. Then I have the speedometer, tachometer off to the right, and coolant temperature to the far right. On the outsides of the gauges, very typical of 90s vehicles like this. On the left, I have my hazard switch and headlight options. And then on the right, I have my wiper options. This feels very, very similar to the Isuzu Stylus that I recently drove as well. Very late 80s, early 90s to put things around the outside of the gauge cluster. Very interesting, the RX-7 did this as well. On the steering wheel, I have two little horn buttons and I do get an airbag, which is very nice for a Geo product pre-airbag requirements. Let's test those horns. <laughs> and I love that. Off to the left, I do have a gauge dimmer switch and my hood release down below. And then on the door, of course, I just have my latch get in and out my lock and my crank window. Moving into the center, I do have two climate control vents. And then the radio, like I said, this radio has been swapped out for a more modern unit. However, this one actually looks a lot more period correct than some other AutoZone Best Buy specials 
I've seen in other vehicles. So I actually like the look of it for it being more modern with USBs and MP3 capabilities. It doesn't ruin the interior look too much. Down below that, we do have our climate controls. Like I said, this featured air conditioning, which still blows cold to this day. Down below that, I do have an ashtray that says fasten seat belts from AAA. Love that. Then I do get this really nice storage cubby in the dashboard. Love the look and utility of that. Down below that cubby, we do have our cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the Geo Metro convertible. And although the Geo Metro can probably be used as a koozie for the big friggin' bottle, it's pretty apparent that it fails the big friggin' bottle test, unfortunately, but not unexpected. As well as I do have a little ashtray, but the brittle plastic has not been kind to the Geo Metro in this area. And so unfortunately it has broken slightly. Then we have the shifter. The shifter feels a very natural height. Without looking at it, I can just rest my hand on it or shift gears and I don't really think too much of it. But then when you look at it, it's so awkwardly tall. So <laughs> I do think that that's pretty funny. Then I have the handbrake and that's pretty much it. The seats are actually pretty comfortable for an economy car, especially from the 90s. This is still very comfortable, fits in pretty well with K cars from Japan or the Ford Festiva, those sorts of vehicles. This feels very similar to that. However, we don't have back seats, but let's talk about the convertible top and why the convertible in 1990 was so special. Well, in 1990, Geo only imported, because this is a Japanese built vehicle, they only imported 33 convertible metros. The reason for that is because GM, who was running the show at Geo, they weren't sure that the convertible Geo would sell all that well. They weren't sure that people wanted them. And so Geo said, let's send 33 over. I don't know how they came to that number, but they said, let's send 33 over and see if people buy them. And people did. Someone bought this one and apparently 32 others. So in 1991, Geo put the convertible into full production. Now it is of course a manual top and there are some very slight differences between the full production convertible and this convertible, mostly being there's this little strap for the rear window. Later models, I believe this was Velcro, don't quote me on that, but I believe it was some type of Velcro where this is a button. It's a little bit user friendly and there's actually two straps on the full production model where this only just has one little strap. So something very interesting, this is one of 33 1990 Metro convertibles. And that is what really drew me to this car besides how clean it is. And I love the convertible top. I love driving with the top down. I think it's just such a cool experience. I'm demonstrating here how the convertible top goes up and down. It's a little bit of a labor filled process. However, you spin these panels out and I love that because it feels like an 80s Hasbro Transformers toy. You gotta twist his leg this way, you gotta pull his arm this way in order to turn him back into a car or into his robot form. I love that about the Geo Metro convertible, but this is how you put the top up. And that panel that I took off in the middle actually does go back on once the top is up for a very nice finish panel, it looks very nice. However, let's hop around back now and let's talk about the trunk and cargo space. Before we talk about the cargo space, it's very important for me to let you know as a viewer that I spent a long time looking for Parking Space 90 because it's a 1990. I want you to know that. There you go. Anyway, let's talk about the cargo space of the Geo Metro. Same key for the locks as it is for the trunk, which is fantastic. GM wasn't doing that for all of their vehicles in 1990. The 1991 Oldsmobile had two different keys still. So nice to see that they utilized one key for all of the locks. Once we are back here, very sizable trunk. This was very, very, very impressive for the Metro, especially it being a convertible. Convertible tops always take up some space and this back here is plenty. Now, these are really cool. These are service manuals for the old geos now of course they have weathered through time here but let's see if we can find some cool pictures i mean just look at all this stuff really cool piece of history this is what the geo service manuals looked like in the early 1990s very very cool something else really cool about this trunk is that you'll notice that this is sort of a fake back it's actually velcroed to the floor and once you pull it up there's actually a pass-through compartment so 
that opens up and then you can come around here behind these seats and pull this up and then you can pass through larger items like golf clubs or wood if you're buying wood for some reason. Um, you can actually pass that through from the rear trunk into the passenger cabin. That is really, really nice and helps you live with the Geo Metro. Often times than not, this was someone's only vehicle, so the more cargo space, the better. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and don't you just wanna hug this little thing? First of all, the owner, Craig, put the graphics on the side, which I think are perfect. They're actually from a golf cart, and I think they fit the Geo Metro perfectly. I almost didn't even wanna say where they were from because they look like they could have been factory. These are the factory hubcaps as well. Greg had to track those down. As well as just a white little Metro convertible screams the 1990s. I do feel like the hot girl at high school whose parents would buy her anything she wanted. So she got a brand new Geo Metro convertible in 1990. She had to have the convertible. And quite frankly, I have to have the convertible too. I'm channeling my inner <laughs> high school popular girl. And that's what Greg exactly told me what he wanted for this car. He wanted it to be like a popular high schooler's car. And boy, did he nail it. One downside of the Geo Metro convertible's body is of course the rocker panels do suffer from rust issues just because that is where the soft top drains any water if it has rained. So if you plan on buying one, definitely check out those rocker panels for rust. Even though this is a very clean version of the Metro, it still has some rust bubbling under the surface. But now let's get on to my final thoughts. Let's talk about the Geo Metro a little bit as a whole, as well as this particular convertible. Well, the Geo Metro as a whole is a very interesting vehicle. Back in the late 1980s, from 1986 to 1991, there was this little car in America called the Yugo. Now, of course, it was sold worldwide, but here in America, we got the Yugo from 1986 till 1991. But really, after 1987, things went really south for that little Yugoslavian car. It got tons of bad press. They were marked as being unsafe. And while there was Yugo mania at the beginning, people didn't want Yugos by the 1990s. They were outdated, which even by 1980 standards, the Yugo was outdated. But there was one redeeming quality of the Yugo, and that was the fact that it was cheap. You could buy a Yugo for $4,000, which was unheard of at the time in America. But when Yugo started dwindling in the late 80s, when people stopped trusting the Yugo, there was, quite frankly, a Yugo-sized hole in the market. People had gotten accustomed to seeing cars being able to be bought with four-digit price tags. And so that's where the Geo sort of slid in. This was an affordable vehicle. Most trim levels were under $7,000, about six and a half thousand, which at the time was a great deal. However, the Geo had something that the Yugo didn't, Japanese engineering. Yes, Geo is technically an American brand, but they really just rebadged Isuzu's and Suzuki's, which are both Japanese brands. So these were actually reliable. You could go out every morning, turn the key, and these cars would start. Imagine that. No, this car isn't flush. It's not loaded with crazy features, but it was simple, reliable transportation available to the masses in the 1990s. Now throw the convertible on top of that, or I guess really chop it off the back of it, and now you can have fun with your Geo Metro. You could get one in a convertible, you could drive with the sun. How great is that? That was the big selling point for the Geo Metro, and that's how the Geo Metro slid in to America's hearts. We had been heartbroken by the Yugo. We had high hopes for it, and we were let down. And while, yeah, there are some people that still hated the Metro, it was leaps and bounds better than what we were currently getting. This car is an absolute blast. I love driving time capsules like this car. And even if my voice is incredibly annoying to you, I hope you enjoyed just looking at this awesome piece of automotive history. I know I sure did. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Greg for letting me take out his Geo Metro convertible. Such a cool experience. And one of only 33 brought here to the States. So I'm very appreciative of Greg. He's been absolutely awesome to work with and I hope to do it again soon. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.